Worthy, and today we're making venison bacon. Today we are making venison bacon. I do get the uh, cure and seasoning products from Cabela's. They come in these nice little kits. They work out well. This kit, if you use the whole thing, will make 25 pounds of bacon and that's what we're going to do today. So I'll show you some of the tools I'll be using to make and mix my mix. I do have my grinder. I have already pre-ground the meat. I have 12 and a half pounds of pork. I took whole pork butts and then I take and cut them up and I grind them all up together with the fat and the meat so that the venison does have some moisture in it because venison is very lean by itself. And then I have 12 and a half pounds of the venison that's ground. I started off by grinding it with the coarse ground plate and then I put everything together and let it freeze a little bit and then I go back and I re-grind it with the fine plate. This is going to help to make sure that everything comes together and that you don't have any gristle or tough pieces. So this is my meat mixer. This is Cabela's brand meat mixer. It attaches right to my grinder. This is an old Gander Mountain grinder and I have modified the meat mixer so that it uh, fits up to it. If you're curious on how I did that, let me know and I can show you. But basically I just cut the housing off and it's a six blind gear and this grinder still holds true to that six blind gear so I'm able to match them up and it works out just fine. It's way easier to use this kind of product than it is to set and hand mix it yourself. It goes a lot quicker and I feel like it mixes better. So I waited a long time but I invested in one of these and I am never going back. All right, so let's get into our seasoning kit here. Basically you have two ingredients to come with this and then it'll have some directions. It's really simple. So I have the maple cure here, and this is what you're going to mix with a cup and a half of water as per the directions. And then this right here is going to be some sugar. Uh, you just mix everything together, and then I'll throw it in the mixer while it's running, and then you continue to mix until that gets tacky. So let's get right into our ingredients. Now if you look at the directions, it's going to say to use 18 pounds of venison trim, and then it's 7 pounds of pork trim and that's gonna make 50% uh, lean. I like to go 50-50 to kind of stretch it out. I use a whole pork butt. It does have quite a bit of fat in it, but I still believe that whenever you cook this bacon out, even doing the 50-50, this bacon's gonna come out leaner than normal bacon, and then it's gonna come out with less sodium as well, but it tastes great. I did it this way last time. Everything came out perfect, and it holds up, and then the pork helps me stretch out my venison. I got three deer this year, and I'm hoping to stretch that out to make all the different projects that we got going. So the venison bacon is just gonna be the first of many. Alright, so the directions say that we're going to mix a cup and a half of distilled water. I think that that's important because the water in different areas is going to react differently with the cures. So do use distilled water. If you can get that from your local grocery store, use it's like a buck a gallon. And then uh, five teaspoons of liquid smoke. That's optional. I'm actually going to throw these in the smoker. We're going to set everything up and then I'll let it cure overnight. And then we'll set them up and we'll smoke them tomorrow. So I'm going to get real smoke in it. And that's how I've always liked to do it. So, so you got your seasonings, it's got the maple cure, and this right here is sugar. So this is all the ingredients that this comes with. I imagine that eventually I'll experiment with adding a few different things, but I've really enjoyed the way that these turned out. I do recommend this kit. Cup and a half of distilled water, and then that's my finely ground pork. Finely ground venison. I'm going to put these into the mixer and then I'll be right back with you to show you how we're doing it. Before we get the meat in, I thought I'd just go ahead and show you what the inside of the mixer looks like. So it's got these blades that turn with the motor of the grinder and that's just what's going to keep mixing it up. It's got a couple of other blades here to provide resistance so that it blends in and doesn't just turn to big chunks together. The one thing that's really nice about this meat mixer is that this rotates up and down. It can lock into place, but that's going to help it empty out whenever you get everything mixed. You just empty it right into a tub. It's got adjustable feet down here at the bottom so you can adjust the level depending on the grinder you have. I just have it permanently set for the one that I've got. The paddle does come out if you take and you pull the knob out. This does pop out. Easy in, easy out. It makes good for cleaning.
So that's the basic functions of it. I'll go ahead and tilt it back up and then we'll start adding the meat. So I've got everything set up. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the grinder on and get the paddles turning. I do apologize if it gets a little bit noisy, but that is the nature of this business. So I hope you can hear me, but as you can see that the venison and the pork starting to come together. I do have the cure already mixed with a cup and a half of water. We'll add that to it. We'll add the other seasoning to it. And then we're going to let it mix until it starts to get really tacky, like sticky looking. So it says four to six minutes. I just go by view. That was the maple cure mix in the water. I believe you mix it with the water so that, that uh, the nitrates can mix throughout the meat evenly and start that curing process. All right, so we're gonna let that go for a little bit and then as soon as it's done, I'll get right back with you. So as you can see, it's been going for a few minutes and the texture has changed. It's starting to get a little bit of that sticky consistency. I do like to take a rubber spatula and then I try to knock down the sides a little bit. I don't get it caught in the auger or else it can damage things and maybe ruin your project, but I try to time it to right as the auger goes past. I just slap down the sides and that makes sure that it brings the meat on the sides into everything. Now that the mixing is complete, I'm just going to take and empty it back into this bin so I can portion it out for the pans. Alright, so I've got it tilted and now I'm just going to draw some of the meat out. You're going to have to pull some of it out until you can get the auger pulled out to get the rest. I try to wipe everything off of the auger as I go. I do have some uh, rubber gloves that I like to wear when I do this part. Got the auger out and then I'll just take and try to clean all the meat off of it. So our next step is going to be to form up the slabs of bacon. I believe here in the instructions it's going to give you a size pan that you should use. Um, it says a 9 by 11. And I believe these right here should be pretty close to a 9 by 11. I've got three pans. I should have four, uh, and I might have to grab another one tomorrow, but I've got three to get us started, and I do have another container. So I'm going to make four slabs of bacon in total. We have uh, 25 pounds here, so we're shooting to have everything be six and a quarter pounds per pan, and that'll have us nice and even. Just grab a scale. In the instructions, it also says that you should uh, spray the pans with oil so that you can get the slabs of bacon to release. All of the pans are really going to do is help you to form the slabs of bacon. And as it cures overnight, it'll kind of stick together and it'll mold and then you can get it out of the pan to smoke. So I'm just going to hit this up with a little bit of spray and then I'm going to put six and a quarter pounds of the meat into it. And I'll do that with the rest of them and then we'll be ready to set it to go into the smoker. So that's six and a quarter pounds. I'm just gonna set this down. And the next thing you wanna do is you wanna press the meat down into your pan to create that mold. Try to get it as even as possible so everything cooks evenly and then you get beautiful strips of bacon when you slice it. So it does take a little bit of massaging to get 
the meat all mixed through and spread out in the pan. And these are cheap aluminum pans, so they're going to start to lose their form too. So I just have to make sure that I put those back and squish them to the sides to make sure I get that nice rectangular form. Alright, so I have all of the meat mixture into the pans. What I've done is I've stacked each pan on top of uh, another one. I've taken a piece of cellophane and I've laid it down over the top and I've pressed all of the air out and pressed it tight. Then I'll use the weight of each of the subsequent uh, racks of meat and that'll help kind of flatten it and secure it. The top one may not get it as good. I was able to substitute another container I found instead of the other tray so I don't have to go get that. But all of these are going to set up in the fridge overnight and then I'll be able to take them out and they'll be solid loaves of that uh, rack of bacon. And then we'll throw them in the smoker and we'll smoke them just like that. And uh, I will see you tomorrow whenever I get up and we start this project. One other note I want to mention. So if you do have a meat mixture like that, and once you get all of the meat out of it, there's a whole bunch of residue stuck on it. And it's kind of a pain to clean. It does help if you have a larger sink like I do that you can tip it over in and get it sprayed out really well. But one of the things I do is I take my water and I let it get really hot. I spray it in there and it kind of partially cooks that meat and then all of that meat comes off easier and then I'm able to clean it out uh, really well. Sometimes if it's in the summer, maybe you can just use a hose and wash it outside to spray it out. Yeah, but that's the, probably the most challenging part of this whole process. Now comes the fun part. Our meat's been sitting in the cooler overnight. Everything is firmed up and I want to take and get the meat out of the pan and I'm going to get it placed right on the rack that goes into my smoker. Everything should be firmed up enough to where it should come out as one whole piece. First thing I'm going to do is throw some gloves on to help keep my hands clean. Then what I'm going to do is just flip it over and hopefully make sure everything lands on that and pops out. So far I've always been successful, but I'm curious to see how bad I fail each time. And there you go. It came out just fine. That's because I oiled the pan. The directions also say to put down some parchment paper, but I've had success with just oiling the pan. Everything solidifies up well and it comes out just like this. So this is how we're going to smoke it. The directions say to cook it in the oven uh, at 200 degrees until the internal temperature is 142 degrees. I'm going to be cooking this in the smoker. I would like to get a little bit more smoke flavor. I think that 200 degrees gets it up to temperature a little too fast. So what I'm going to do is knock that down to 180 and I'm going to hit it with heavy smoke and extend that cooking time just a little bit. And then towards the last hour of the smoke, I will kick it up to 200 degrees. I get it up to that 142 degrees Fahrenheit and then I let it cool off. And then we'll cut it and slice it up and I'll show you how I do that as well. Well, here we are with one of the loaves of the venison bacon. Everything is smoked. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to get ready to process it and I slice it up. It's not very difficult to do if you don't have a slicer like I have. I have just one of these cheap ones from Cabela's. It's a hundred dollar slicer and it comes in real handy for situations like this where I'm just slicing something simple. Eventually I think I'll get one of the bigger commercial slicers to show you some of the other products that I can make. But at this point this is what I've got and this works great for the bacon. First thing I'm going to do is just kind of size it up. I like to eyeball it. I'm going to cut this loaf in half and then I'll set it up to go on the slicer. So I just eyeball it here because I'll be packaging it myself. I just get it pretty much in half. And then this right here is what it looks like. And then I'll just take and I'll slice this. I'm going to slice it this way. So this is the length of each one of the strips of bacon. And I'll get going with this and then we'll see what we got. So we have half of the first loaf already sliced. Then I'll show you kind of what it looks like. When we get all said and done, I just stack it up on a tray like this. Each piece is 
It's gonna look just like that. You can set the thickness to whatever preference you like. Just kind of gauge with that. Make sure that you're always keeping your hands clear of the blade. That is dangerous. Just pay attention to what you're doing and you shouldn't have any issues. Another note I want to make is while I'm slicing it, this type of the venison bacon has a tendency to crumble a little bit. I do save all of those crumbles. I hold on to all that and then I'll use that in other recipes. I can use that in biscuits and gravy instead of the sausage that I make. Or I can set this up and use it in a different recipe, sometimes salads and stuff like that. You can fry them up and then just top them with something. It works out great. So I don't waste anything if I can help it. We're going to go ahead and take a couple of these slices of bacon. We'll fry up and see what it looks like. And then I'm going to finish processing all of the rest of the meat. So I'll be processing 25 pounds in total. And that's how I make venison bacon. It is not too difficult, but it does take time. So you got to make sure you prepare ahead of time. One of the things that I do as I'm going through the years, I look for pork on sale. And when I find pork butts on sale really cheap, usually about 99 cents a pound, I'll pick up a hundred pounds of it so that I have everything ready for whenever I need to process my venison. And this is, like I mentioned, a 50-50 mix of venison and pork, so it can kind of stretch things out. The one nice thing about adding a little bit more pork in there is this actually smells like bacon whenever you cook it. And I really enjoy that smell. This uh, 25 pounds will probably get me through half the year, then I'll probably make 25 more pounds. And if I decide to change the recipe at all and add to something that comes with that mix, I'll let you know. Maybe I'll do another video over it. Uh, let me know what, what thoughts you have. If you have any comments, if something you'd like to see or something you've tried and you want to share, let me know. Make sure that you share this with your friends. Like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. I'm going to eat these couple of pieces of bacon, and then I'm going to get back to slicing. We will see you next time. Thank you.